You might remember Louise Lasser from some of her iconic roles throughout the 60s and 70s. What you might not know is the turbulent path that her career took after these roles and into today. In this video, we're going to take a look at the career of this legendary actress. Be sure to stick around until the end of the video to find out what caused Louise's eventual downfall and how she's doing today. Facts First presents Remember Louise Lasser? This is her today. Louise Lasser, born April 11, 1939, is an iconic American actress best known for her work as Mary Hartman in the soap opera Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman. The series portrayed her as an unhappy housewife in the soap opera. The show aired five nights a week, lasting two seasons from 1976 to 77. Briefly married to director and actor Woody Allen, Lasser appeared in his films as well. She also appeared in many comedies and classic TV series throughout the rest of her career. During her early years, she attended college, majoring in political science at Brandeis University. Early on in her career, she appeared in the Broadway musical I Can Get It For You Wholesale as Barbara Streisand's understudy. In addition, she appeared in the Doctor's Soap Opera. This prepared her for her lead role years later. 1976 was the year of Louise Lasser for TV. She instantly rose to fame after appearing in Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman. In addition to screen time, she was offered countless magazine covers. She became an overnight sensation. While it may have seemed like she was an overnight success, Lasser put in hard work for years prior in smaller roles. She was featured on The Bob Newhart Show and The Mary Tyler Moore Show. Her smaller roles on these shows prepared her for her big break. So whatever happened to this beloved actress? Let's explore. Lasser's personal life during the peak of her success was enduring challenges. She started dating Woody Allen when she was just 21 years old. A few years later, the couple married in 1966. By 1970, the pair had split and divorced. During an interview in 2013, Lasser noted Allen was possessive. She commented that due to her young age, she was unable to identify warning signs that would have alerted her to their incompatibility. Due to these events, her depression accelerated and ultimately led to a public breakdown. Her schedule on the Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman soap opera was rigorous and intense. According to an interview with People Weekly, the soap opera schedule was equivalent to a movie a week for over 25 weeks. This led to the buildup of events that caused Lasser to spark controversy. The exhaustion due to her schedule and personal issues led to her arrest. During an attempt to purchase a dollhouse, she was asked to leave after her payment was declined. She refused to leave without the item, and cops were called. Upon arrival, they found narcotics in her purse. This was one of the events that attracted critics. The other occurred during Saturday Night Live, when a strange and offbeat monologue aired. The SNL monologue caught the attention of viewers as it was unusual. The episode was said to be an attempt to bring Woody Allen on as a host for SNL. One of the guests for that night was Preservation Hall Jazz Band. The musical guest had previously worked with Allen for his sleeper film. This led many to speculate the purpose of the SNL episode was to attract the director to the show. Lorne Michaels produced the episode for SNL, and his plan backfired and didn't turn out the way he expected. During Lasser's opening monologue, she stated her character in the soap opera was in the middle of a breakdown. She proceeded to imitate her character on the night show. This led many to raise an eyebrow, as it was an odd way to begin the show. She began explaining how upset and nervous she was to be on live TV. The scene ended with her running into her dressing room backstage, crying. The cast members attempted to convince her to come back to center stage. However, she refused, as no one could convince her otherwise. It wasn't until Chevy Chase was able to finally persuade her. Chase was featured on a previous episode of SNL. According to reports, rehearsals for the night show were unsuccessful as Lasser was unwilling to work with certain actors and actresses. The only person she would work with was Chase. The episode closed out with a scene of Lasser sitting on the floor discussing her recent issues. When asked about the monologue during a 2013 interview, Lasser stated she intentionally made it appear as though she was having a breakdown and emotionally distressed. She said scripts were written for her, however, she declined to perform them as they were salacious. She didn't approve of the direction SNL wanted to direct her monologue. She said she was uncomfortable with the ideas brought to her for the show by the producers. Instead, she decided to perform the monologue she wanted. While she received criticism for the episode, she was not banned from the show. Her manager had the episode pulled from SNL due to her open discussion of recent issues covered in the media, such as the arrest. Following these events, she recouped and was able to stabilize herself. She shot a second season of Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman. However, she left the show in 1977. After her exit from the show, it was renamed Forever Fernwood. The rebranded soap opera focused on the other characters in the series. According to the New York Times in 1976, Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman was a cultural event. The 70s was an important decade for awakening women's rights and gay rights. The entertainment of Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman is still relevant today and adds an element of social commentary and bravery. 
Her character features both enlightenment and insanity. Years later, in the early and late 2000s, the soap opera released a reunion in Beverly Hills and received a spot on the list of top cult shows. Ever since the ending of the soap opera, Lasser has stepped away from the public eye. She continued to act after the show ended. The appearances were infrequent, however, she still continued her career. Fast forward to current times, Lasser lives in New York City and owns an acting studio near her apartment. She's taken this time to get close to her Jewish faith. She noted she feels lucky to have the Jewish faith background and has recently incorporated the traditions into her life. This has been a positive step for her and serves an important role. Now that you understand exactly what happened to Louise Lasser, let's take a closer look into the specifics of her other roles in TV and early life as an adolescent. Her early life began in New York City. She's the daughter and only child of S.J. Lasser, a tax specialist and author of a popular tax book in the 70s and 80s. She is Jewish heritage. Lasser's mother committed suicide in 1964 following the divorce from Lasser's father. Years later, her father took his own life as well. Her other projects in the film industry include a made-for-TV movie that Lasser wrote herself. It was entitled Just Me and You. She released it in 1978 and co-starred with Charles Grodin. Following this, Lasser appeared in Marie and Bruce and a couple of white chicks sitting around talking. She also found success as the recurring wife of Alex in Taxi. Additionally, she was featured in It's a Living series as a waitress from 1981 to 82. She appeared in Frankenhooker in 1990, The Night We Never Met in 1993, Sudden Manhattan in 1996, and Layin' Low in 1996. She also starred in Happiness, produced by Todd Solondz. She also appeared in 1999's Mystery Men. Additionally, Lasser had roles in Requiem for a Dream and Fast Food, Fast Women. Furthermore, she co-starred in National Lampoon's Gold Diggers alongside Renee Taylor. More recently, she appeared in the popular HBO series Girls as an artist in the show's third season. Her career as the owner of the Louise Lasser Acting Studio in Manhattan has taken her in a new direction. She served as a faculty member of HB Studio, where she pursued her passion as an acting teacher. She taught acting technique at the studio. During 2014, she directed Chinese Coffee, an off-off-Broadway production written by Ira Lewis. To this day, Lasser resides in Manhattan. During a two-hour-long interview with the Television Academy, Lasser went into deeper detail of her childhood, her interest in performing, her decision to study acting, her experience working with former husband Woody Allen, and more. The interview begins with her detailing how she created Jane as her middle name. She did not officially have a middle name, which led to her creating one. She thought Louise was too complicated and actually preferred Louise Joe. Her mother thought it wasn't a good fit, and so Louise decided on Jane instead. She was born and raised in Manhattan. She disliked public school and was relocated to a private school. She enjoyed her time at the private school, and it allowed her to be more creative. When she was asked to write about the most beautiful thing she's ever seen as an academic acceptance paper, she wrote about the private school. Up until that time, she believed the school was the most beautiful thing she had ever experienced. Her father was an accountant, and her mother was a designer. She noted her father was light and funny, while her mother was sensitive and artistic. Initially, she was not interested in acting or performing. Around nine years old, she visited a music and art camp. She studied drama at the camp and felt happy to be involved with the arts. Her parents wanted her to study in college, and she agreed. When asked about her favorite shows when she was younger, she noted her father would fall off his chair if a show or film was very funny. She noted she lacked self-awareness as an adolescent. She studied at Brandeis University. Due to her education at private school, her, her entry into Brandeis was relatively easy for the prestigious school. She studied political science due to her interest in the government and how politics were run. While in college, she performed with extracurricular activities such as minor recreational shows. She left college halfway through her last year and began her professional acting career. Up until that point, she hadn't studied acting. She found an acting teacher and coach she admired and asked him to help her during the summer. He initially refused, wanting her to take a full course, but eventually obliged. The experience with her acting coach was superb, according to Lasser. She said the instruction made a big difference in her life. She noted that as time passes, she realizes the importance of taking experiences in stride and making them positive. She believes acting is handmade art. Her acting coach had a positive experience on her and set her on the course. She would ponder whether or not her projects would be successful. She did not plan her career. She developed her career as she went. In her younger years, she idolized Judy Garland. She liked the way she cried when she sung. She believed it was moving, emotional, and powerful. She understood the difficulty Judy Garland had and respected her work as a musician. 
In the 60s, Lasser had begun exploring acting on television. At that time, there were few acting shows on the air. When she was younger, she loved classic, fun style. She noted her unsure and conflicted demeanor into adulthood. When asked about Woody Allen, she said she had no direction. He had many big projects occurring at the time and took direction from him. She starred in many of his early films. She described his comedy as silly and fun. She noted he was successful and prolific in his films. Following this, she starred as the understudy of Barbara Streisand. Once she starred in the Broadway play, she officially became a major Hollywood actress. She did many projects, including a pilot where she thought her role was boring. Following this, she appeared on the Mary Tyler Moore Show. She thought it was interesting how the adults on the show were youthful, funny, and childish. She described that time as enjoyable. During these years, she wrote her own material as well. She rented a home near the Bay in East Hampton for a summer. She made an oath to rise every morning at 5 a.m. and write dialogue between herself and a co-star in a romantic genre. She wrote all summer, and by the end of the season, the book was full. She brought the book to her manager in California, who gave her a deal for directing Just Me and You. She noted the writing process was perfect for her because it came naturally. From early childhood to her mature years, Louise Lasser formed a notable career in acting, writing, producing, and teaching. Now that we understand her early years and career following the soap opera, we can see the progression of her life from New York City to California and back again. We hope you enjoyed this look at iconic actress Louise Lasser. Now we'd like to hear from you. Are you on Louise's side with the SNL controversy, or do you think she was out of line? Let us know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe to Factsverse for more videos like this.